ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. <laughs> oh. oh. It's emotional, Daniel. This is it. Do you think I have a few more questions? Are they questions? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that were checks. Mm. I'm going to start. Should we sit closer? Mm. Seeing though it's the last time, or we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> During the interview, we'll let this one be in the middle for the moment, but we'll like at one point, like... Okay, so I'll start. <laughs> Daniel, this will be our Max. last... <laughs> this will be our last on the sofa together. Was it something I said? No. It's the things you didn't say. <laughs> I, just, I was like, I, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> it's not what you said, it's what you didn't say. Yeah. Yeah. What's the three things you will miss about Red Bull? Free Red Bull. The, yeah. <laughs> the caffeine, the cool hats. Well, I mean, you still got them, so. Yeah, I you guess. Can, yeah. <laughs> and probably the perks of like Red Bull being globally so big. So meeting like, cool athletes like other Red Bull athletes are going to cool events and like just not normally asking for tickets just knowing that you're going to get in yeah. and be looked after well if you're yeah. nice to me maybe I can sort you out <laughs> <laughs> Arigato <laughs> what are the true things you won't miss about Red Bull <sighs> doing uh, doing anything in the cold is not not me so I won't miss that and <sighs> I won't miss helmets phone calls after a bad race. Yeah, I won't miss those. Mm. Have you seen Austin mm. Powers or was that before your uh, time? A little bit, a little bit. Mr. Bigglesworth? Yeah. The cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is like Are Mr. you going to be like this now though? Yeah. <laughs> so Daniel. Yes. Have you handed back the keys to your Aston Martin yet or are you going to put it on eBay? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, have I? No. So. How much mileage do you have on it? I don't know. Maybe they'll let me keep it. I think that's what they told me originally. They're like, you can keep it. So let's uh, chat about this season a little bit. Um, would the Monaco win this year have been a sweet without the drama of 2016? Yeah. Yeah. Still. I think Monaco always would have been sweet. Yeah. But actually, I'm going to put Mr. Bigglesworth away for a bit. He's getting excited. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I thought it would have been less sweet after 2016. But... No. It was still pretty good. It was very sweet, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was, that was cool. More sweet than I thought it would have been, actually. All right. First one for you. Yeah, it took a while. Cheers, Dan. Like, who's actually, who is Dan? I'm trying to figure it out. I've, ne I've never heard of Dan. Yeah. I only know Daniel. Yeah. Enchanté. Which was the biggest highlight for you this year? Austria or the Mexico win? I think uh, Austria, because it was re like completely unexpected. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Dutch fans around, and of course with the Red Bull car winning at the Red Bull ring, I think, yeah, that, that made it. And also, you know, the race itself was, I think, a lot, lot harder to manage because of ties. You were not, you, were, you didn't know if you were going to go to mm. the end because of the, the blistering. Yep. All right. Austria. There you go. This is Max to Daniel. Max to Daniel. Max to Daniel. Box, okay. box, box. <laughs> Talk to us about China this year. I mean, the effort from both sides of the garage to get your car out for qualifying was huge. Do you think that made the win even sweeter? Yeah, the, that was like Saturday morning, had the failure, didn't think we were going to get out for qualifying. As soon as Genty, the number one on my car, gets a challenge put in front of him and someone says, you can't do that, he's the guy that's like, well, I'm going to do it. So yeah, we got out with like two minutes left in qualifying, qualified, started sixth, and then the whole strategy, race, everything worked. and. That was like super sweet. As far as like yeah. team teamwork goes, it's definitely the most team like constructive win I've ever had, um, where everyone played a part. Um, so thank you. Screw, screw, screw. Are you saying screw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Oh. Daniel to Max. Daniel to Max. 
Um, what were your top three highlights from this year? Two on track and one off track. And you can't Ooh. say your wins. Okay. Um, so two on track highs, which weren't wins. Let's start with that. Uh, qualifying in Singapore. 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 Uh, yeah, it starts off so well already. <laughs> qualifying so, in Singapore. Yeah, yep. because of well the difficulties we had with the engine not responding like we wanted to, and then still put it on on the first row. I was very happy with How that. How much were you off, Lewis? Was it, could two, it have been close? Two tenths. Okay. I think it was two tenths. Yeah. Um, it was a good lap. It was, yeah, it was, it was good lap. It was all right. Other highlights. Yeah. FP3 um, in Monaco? That was a big, <laughs> yeah, that was a big <laughs> highlight. <laughs> the gearbox was highlighted. <laughs> oh. uh, now, maybe another podium. Uh, I think, I, I think um, Austin. I would Austin, go for Austin. I was going to say Austin, yeah. Yeah, because I haven't, I didn't, well, I was never on a podium there before, so that it's was fun, very huh? nice. And then coming like from 16, I think I was 16. Yeah. It was a fun race in general. So, Do you think you could have got Kimi with a few more laps or was mm, kind of stabilized? I thought so, but then with a few laps ago, my tires went off. So okay. I think if we would have done more laps, it was mainly just Lewis getting by me than I actually passing yeah. Kimi. So um, yeah, that was good. That was a good memory. Um, off track. One, one off track moment. The ladders actually, we did destroy that one. Yeah. You remember when I didn't see the, the gap? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still don't know how we didn't roll. Yeah, that was, that was a shame actually. We should have rolled. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah, if it put us out before the race, it would have been a blessing in disguise <laughs> yeah. the way that weekend ended. Oh. Well done, Baku. Apart from Baku, what was the worst on track moment for you this year? Where do I start? <laughs> Do you have enough fingers? I know. Um, actually, well, the f well, it it all started in Melbourne before the season even started in practice, where I got the penalty for not slowing enough up for that red flag. So that started with putting my elbows through the door of my room, and then a week later, I channeled, I tried to channel that energy into Bahrain, and my race finished after one lap. So I put my knee through the door in that one. <laughs> And it kind of spiraled. So there was a lot of moments. Um, oh, so was this had, worst on track? So, Sorry. yeah, on track. Oh, okay, then. But like you got the your real, elbow through the wall, your knee, Yeah, your and fist. the fist was in Austin and Austin was the worst one. Yeah, Austin, I don't know why, but that one I just, yeah, I reached a real low. One thing I won't miss as well about Red Bull is the sofa. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm, I'm like literally a bit like sitting further down. It's actually quite comfortable now. It's a bit softer. <laughs> Is that better? My mum would kick my ass for putting my feet on the couch now as well. Yeah. But it's my last day. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, let's talk about Brazil, Max. Let's talk about Brazil. Caperinhas, Fogo de Chao. More importantly, do you know what your community service will be? Not yet. No, it's um, it's going to be an interesting one. I, I just feel I would have done more. And I feel you held yourself back. I, but like some people said I was not calm. I was really calm. Yeah, I like, thought you I was, were really calm. Yeah. Like, that's as calm as you can be, so. I mean, what should you do? Like, shake his hand? Like, thank you very much yeah, for ruining exactly. my race? I mean. But I don't know. Uh, you go. What's the best thing about being Daniel Ricciardo at the moment? Knowing I go home to Australia in like a week and I, I'm going to have summer when you guys have winter. Yeah. That's the best thing about, that's the best thing I got going on right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, what's the best thing about being Max Verstappen right now? Right now is that I have a few more commitments. So um, it's amazing. A few more days, a few more days. Lunch though, knowing we got oh. some good lunch coming. Yeah. Burgers and shakes. Actually what shake did you go for? What flavor? Strawberry. Strawberry. Oh, you're that guy. A lot of my friends have Where you go for? like fruit flavored shakes. I don't get it. Where? It has to be like a chocolate, a vanilla, a caramel, like fruit in dessert. I also Des like vanilla. Yeah. So we can do like half, half. Okay. Strawberry just sounds weird. 
It's good though. But if you give it to me, I'll have it, sure. If yeah. you don't finish it, I'll have leftovers. And All right, season. I ordered two shakes, by the way. I ordered two burgers. Oh, really? <laughs> Can you tell it's off season? All right. Since the last time I asked you, have you or anyone you know seen a ghost? Um, I mean, to be fair, I mean, that your does character like here, he looks like a ghost. Especially after you've been he's petting him, like, look at the hair. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like he, his hair got shorter. I don't know what happened. How about you? Did you see a ghost? No, no ghost. ghost. No. All right. No. Unfortunately not. He's laughing. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> you look so wrong. <laughs> Have you or anyone you know ever seen a UFO? Um, I guess not. Yet. Let's get this going. Do you, do you, do you think they're real? I personally don't. No? No. No. I used to think the same, but... Then again, the like universe is so big, like it's infinite. So there must be infinite possibility. Very wise words from Mr. Daniel Ricciardo. There you go. To think we're the only things here, I think that's kind of naive. But we are. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. Interesting. It is. Du, 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 du. You need to play the X-Files music. There you go. So, oh, he's, the, he's a legend, man. D David um, Duchovny. David, if you're listening, if you're a fan of Red Bull, wherever you are, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. That's all. You're an inspiration. Oh. Do you think that Bigfoot and Yeti are related? I've never watched Star Wars. This Yeti from Star Wars? Yeti. Yeah. Is it a real thing? Yeah, well, he's not. Well, oh, I mean, that's the question. It, 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 I mean, I've just said UFOs are probably real, so. Oh, they're related. Yeah. It's not about being real, they are not real. <laughs> I'm going to say they're not related because I didn't know who Yeti was until about 13 seconds ago. So that's why they're not related. <laughs> <laughs> My okay. lack of knowledge proves they're not related. Are they related? <laughs> Do you know the answer? But one's from the snow and one's from like the jungle, right? No, Bigfoot is also in the snow. They can't be related. They can't Opposing be related. climates. But you have those like um, skis, right? They're a lot smaller. Like they're called, they're called Bigfoot <laughs> skis. <laughs> it's like small skis. Yeah, no. <laughs> they're, like, they're like this, I swear. <laughs> I swear I'm not talking <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I think Daniel has a problem. <laughs> What's the stupidest way you ever hurt yourself? Hurt myself? Yeah. Yeah, here. How? I walked into the door. Uh, in the night. Drug? I think I, I still was. Okay. That's the... I had a sleep, but I woke up and I walked into the door. Okay. Fair enough. So that was not lovely. You? I broke my arm as a kid. Uh, February the 13th, 2003. Basically, how did I... So I broke my humerus, okay. like a serious bone, and I broke it by throwing a tennis ball. <laughs> I, I, threw, could... I threw a ball and my arm snapped. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And so how I had, is that possible? In the end, I, so we found out I had a bone cyst. So something that I guess some people get, it's just, I don't know how, but I guess you're just maybe born with it. And over time, it, I guess it's some form of like little disease in a way. Anyway, so it, it, it's a thing that eats away your bone over time. And eventually the bone becomes so thin that it, it eventually is going to break, basically. Um, so it could have happened like the doc, uh, the hospital said it could have happened like getting out of bed like one morning i could have just got out of bed and it would have just snapped like oh. so i was walking with my friends um it was at lunchtime at school and people were playing cricket so the ball came over so i like just picked it up threw it and that's when it snapped and i just fell to the floor and all my friends were laughing at me like you're being an idiot get up and i was like 
obviously crying. And yeah, and the, the guy that hit the ball, true story, the guy that hit the ball was, uh, I want to say, at l I don't want to exaggerate, I want to say at least 50 meters away, at the very least 50 meters away, and he heard the snap. When it, it, was, it was that loud, I'll never forget it, unfortunately. I wish I could. But anyway, so if you like touch my arm now, you can feel like the bone where it grew over. It's kind of weird. Anyway, broke my arm throwing a tennis ball. Impressive. Yep. Impressive. Yep. One weird thing with that, I'll just <laughs> So I was sitting there at school, like waiting for my mum to pick me up because I didn't know what I'd done. I didn't know it was broken. I just knew something was up. And I went to move my arm. Oh. I was supporting it and I went to move it. And I literally, I could feel things inside like move, but my arm stayed still. So like oh, all like no. the whatever oh. nerves or whatever, like I could feel them move, but my arm didn't move. I was like, oh, that was the scariest thing I've ever felt in my life. Oh. Yeah. And I'm not good with that stuff. I get- So you have like a scar you know, here now? Uh, no, so it, they couldn't operate on it. So they needed just to, um, I mean, they like, I don't know what they did in the end, but they couldn't operate. I stayed in a cast for a crazy amount of time. And then it just like grew over. So I got no scar, but you can just feel, I'll let you touch it later. Off camera, <laughs> I'll let you touch my arm. What is the best fact you know? The best, the best fact, fact you know. Very open-ended question. Just what do you know about life? That the earth is round? I don't know. It's certainly not flat, like some people think. What's your best fact you know? Um, one of my favorite movies ever, Jerry Maguire. The human head weighs, is it nine pounds? Or 11 pounds? Well, it depends how big your head yeah, is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> The human head weighs nine pounds. I don't, I mean, you've got a watermelon head. I've got like a pea head. So let's beg to differ that there's a difference across heads. You're almost 30. Have you started to ask yourself what the meaning of life is? Wow. Um, I, I certainly reflect more like now. I think that's just, but that's just, doesn't matter probably your age. It just comes with more years on this earth, more experience, more people you meet, more things you see. So um, yeah, I, I'm certainly more like deep and reflective than I used to be. But um, I don't know. I've noticed this year that I certainly, if, if racing was the only thing making me happy, then I'd be pretty miserable. So yeah. you need other things in life for sure. Uh, I think that's where your friends are really important. So yeah, having, um, I think just making sure that you don't distance this from your, I don't know, like my friends, my friends live in Australia. So making sure I still have the relationship with them and don't get caught up too much in this. Cause when this ends, I'm going to want them. So yeah, yeah probably uh, the friends are important. You don't have any questions anymore. I'll ask you a few at some point if I feel like it. Let's talk about some on-track moments for the fast. Let's talk about sex, baby. baby. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about you and me. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about all the good things, <laughs> all the bad things. Uh, Let's talk about sex. sex. Let's talk about some on-track moments from the past few years. Where did you have the biggest smile? Canada 2014 or Monaco 2018? Actually, it was really big in 14. Yeah, it was I remember I even tweeted, tweeted like a photo of me like with a massive smile. I said, it can't get any bigger. So Canada 2014. That was, yeah. that was pretty big. Yeah. Daniel, at Monza in 2014, you passed Seb in a pretty sick move. How did you feel pulling that move on a four-time world champion? That was, that was probably my favorite move. Well, one of my most satisfying for sure, because I feel like it hadn't really been seen and like it was quite risky as well to so to do it on a teammate and then yeah i don't know it just happened like i didn't really think about it, it just happened but that was fun yeah i thought he was gonna hate me after that but he said nice move i'm sure he still hated me but he said nice <laughs> yeah. move he's like but, nice move mate <clears throat> but i actually um i like seb i like seb i respect him a lot as uh, as a rival and i think he's a good person do you get on with him? Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, he's very nice. Yeah. I think he's very, uh, he cares about the sport. Therefore, I think he cares about his And he's pretty down to earth. Yeah. Yeah. Like probably the most out of everyone. Yeah. If he had to pick your best moment from your seven Grand Prix wins, which one would it be? I mean, jumping in the pool in Monaco, that was certainly 
that was like, I'd never seen so many people. I didn't know that many people existed in F1. You, you, know, you know that the, the whole weekend people have been sitting there with their toes. I know, know, I know. I didn't get sick sweaty though. Sweaty feet and... I think I drank enough alcohol to kill <laughs> anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then like the on-track part, which I enjoyed the most out of the wins was... The move on Bodas in China was cool. But probably probably Budapest, that as a race with um, getting through Alonso, uh, Hamilton and Alonso, I just, that was fun. Knowing that like it was those two in front of me. The, yeah, maybe I was the like, hardest ones to get by. Yeah, it was at the time that was cool. You've said some interesting things over the radio to your race engineer Simon in your time. Let's go through some of the highlights and you can name the race they're from. Awesome. Huh? That's how it's done, ladies. Budapest 2014. On who? Who, who uh, did you pass? Alonso. Yeah. So then going yeah. through turn two. Yeah. Nothing to Alonso, just, just. It was more a dig because before the season, everyone was like, okay, he's, I think he's fast over one lap, but I don't think he can race. And I don't think he's got the, you know, thing to, like to overtake craft, basically, like, yeah. yeah. So like all that year, I was just the one doing like all the moves. And that was just like a dig at people that thought I couldn't pass and race. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you did well. Budapest 2014. I liked them vulnerable. I liked them vulnerable. Monza. To who? Monza. <laughs> I think that was with, it was with you or Seb? No. Oh, wait, Massa. Is yeah. it Massa? Yeah, Massa, that's right, Massa. Um, Simon goes, yeah, he's, he's all alone now. He's without DRS, like, let's get him. He's vulnerable. Yeah. And then I say, I like him vulnerable. Yeah. Next one, I'm going for it. Oh, Bottas, Brazil. So I came out, I was behind him for so many laps and I was starting to get pissed off. I was like, he's, he's like got so much power and using all the battery. I said, I can't pass. And out of the last corner, he had just a little snap. You were like, and I, as soon as I saw the snap, I came on the radio. I was like, I'm going. And uh, Simon's like, I don't know what he said, like, let's have him or something. And then like halfway down the straight, I was like, oh, I'm pretty far away. I was like, like, but I have to go, I have to. And then I think he clipped a little bit just before breaking. I was like, all right, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Why, did, why is this in? You're doing really well, Max. Keep pushing, Sam. Just because you've got more features, you want to keep moving. <laughs> 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 Who thought of that? Really? No. That's amazing. <laughs> I was like, that's cute. I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Who will you miss most in the team? In in general? Yeah. Out of everyone? That's a difficult one. <laughs> I feel bad saying, like, I'll miss a lot of guys. All right, Simon, I spend a lot of time with. And when we first started working together, he's he's, like, so different. He's from, like, Yorkshire. Somewhere in England. I'm from Australia. We're very different, but um, like our personalities and our sense of humor. But I feel over time his humor rubbed off on me, and we both like made this blend, which made us pretty cool. Um, and we'll do like mountain biking together, and we did a lot of stuff together. So I'll miss him because the relationship blossomed probably more than I thought it would. So it was like an unexpected love of two people unspoken in some regards. Simon, if you're listening. Illy. Means I love you. What's the thing you will miss most about working with me? Um, always, this is always getting emotional. I, always when I feel I'm the most immature person in the room, there's always you look one across, more. You look across. Yeah, there's always one more. So I'm always like known to be the idiot and just the immature kid. But now I took over. You took over, so and I, I give I it could to get Pierre. Away with I give a lot. it to Pierre now. I could get away with a lot, so that's what I'll miss. Yep. Now I have to. How about uh, you? What are you gonna miss about me? Actually, just um, you know, doing me things and like normally that at that area is always a bit like can be like quite quiet and a bit too serious. Where in the meetings, you know, the the oh, engineering yeah, office. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Like it can be a bit like too serious and boring, but of course. With you there, it's never really boring or too serious. So I'll probably miss that. 
<laughs> I tried, I really tried. Ah, oh, danke. This is actually, I would like to know. You're, you're 50 years old. Where are you and what are you doing? Do you think we'll still be friends? I think we will be friends. I think we will. Um, I actually think I'll be friends with quite a few drivers. Like once we finish, like I it, see it, it gets with the, a, yeah. the older guys now that are retired, a lot of them are friends. And I think because the competition is put aside. So you've, you've got still a lot in common without the distraction of competition and wanting to beat each other. So um, yeah, and, and we got, I mean, we're probably still going to be traveling the world. So I think there'll be times where we meet up and hang out. So I think we'll still be friends. And where will I be? Probably on my farm in Australia, just doing normal things. Yeah, but I'll still travel, I'm sure, because I'll probably get bored, but yeah. I'll spend a big, big part of my time on, on the farm. Just racing around, rolling the birds. <laughs> yeah. By then, hopefully by the time I'm 50, I built like an empire on the farm and there's like lots of things to do. And like, I want to build an amphitheater and host like music events there. Oh, really? That's like my long-term vision because I love music. So I can't play it. So I might as well at least bring them to me. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. We'll get some Dutch DJ, DJs there. Oh, for sure. That they would be... come along. Yep. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like the farm. And in 20 yeah. years time, it's going to be fun. Don't worry. All right. How about you? 50 at years. 50 years. Of... Not in, sorry, at 50. At 50. That's another 29 years. I'm 29 years old. Yeah. Wow. It's meant to be. Wow. Friends forever. I mean, you, you are getting close. To, you are like almost there yeah. already. I like I'm so far away, but I mean, I'm so as soon as you touch 30, it's going really quickly. Yeah. But okay, anyway. And I miss you. And I loved you all along. So far away. Um, when I'm 50, <laughs> I hope that I would like to have a racetrack, coca track, like just like this whole like area together with a museum, a bit like Fernando has, but then yeah. also a racetrack next to it. Yeah. So pretty big. A full size racetrack. Full track. size. Yeah. At least five kilometers long, like proper track. Nice. And then my dream is to have like a big pit building, like where I can store all my cars. And when I arrive there with friends and stuff, we can just take a car and run. You know, everything should work. Have a few mechanics there to always look after it. And then maybe like a motocross track next to it, you know, stuff like that. Just make it like a real fun, like park. Brop. Brop and then jump over the track. Oh. Brop. It's a good whip. Stuff like that. And are we going to be friends? Are we going to be friends? Uh, like you say, I think really what, once you stop racing, it's like just brings everyone much more together. You see it, yeah, like you said, with the older drivers. Yeah. It, um, what do you think we'll be doing if we're hanging out? Probably drinking. I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to involve alcohol. It's going to be like someone like just chilling out, like a big TV in front. Hopefully <laughs> some people around and some alcohol. And it's like, Daniel, would you ever go, want to go back to racing? And you're like, oh, I'm pretty comfortable over here. Another beer, please. <laughs> Uh, did you enjoy your career? Yeah, I absolutely did. But I also enjoy this right now. Yeah. I fully agree, Daniel. So by the time he's 50, he's hosting karting championships and I'm hosting big music events. That's what not we bad, say. is it? I think we'll be all right. Giving yeah. something back? Yeah. Enchanté. So Daniel, these are all of your 29 trophies here around you. Are they? They are. None of mine. Ah. So which trophy do you, you like the most out of all of them? Uh, all right, so let's go looks first. The most beautiful one is... I like that one. I mean... The Budapest one? Yeah. It's not, maybe it's not the best one, but I do like it. Because it's different, for sure. Yeah. How many times did you finish on the podium in Monaco? Three or four, I think. Four. 14, 16, four, 14, 17, 18. Yeah, seven, four. Oh yeah, 17 as well, of yeah. course, yeah. I do really like the American one. This American one's cool. Uh, all right, well, let's go with what they mean. So, yeah. Yeah, which one? I that's That was my second question. Is that, which one even means know. the most to you? Is that Monaco? Yeah, yeah. that's Monaco. Mate. Like 20. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You it'll, throw it against the wall? It'll it? get you, that one. Where, um, which is, the, is that first? No, that's not. Yeah. True. Is that first? Yeah. This one. 
Let's go with this. Uh, that's Canada, Canada. Right? Your first. And it's actually... It's actually a pretty cool trophy. Mine is already completely... Look how heavy that is. Oh, yeah. It's a... They've like, made that one well. Yeah. They don't always make them well, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to say Canada first win, and it was big. You'd steal all of them and then get the replicas changed. Just take them all with you, and then you're like, oh, no, that's all right. I'll give them back next week, and then you swap them. We should do that. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Canada. Canada's yeah. the one. Um, yeah. Okay. We're going to play a game now. It's called, who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> oh. I'm Detective John Kimball. Oh, my God. My mission is to ensure the survival of John Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, kindergarten <laughs> cop, Terminator. Oh I just laid God. him out for you. All right. But seriously, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. <laughs> and I want to have an answer immediately. As fast as you can. You have never seen those movies, have um, you? I, <laughs> I can't recall that. Kindergarten Cop would have been out before he was born. All right, go for it. Sorry, man. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to blindfold you and hand you a trophy. And after you have to guess the race, the year, and where you finish just by feeling the trophy. All right. Can you see it or not? No, I'll just leave my hand here. <laughs> Just tell me when it's there. Yep, I'm in front of you now. All right. Ah, uh, this is Barcelona, uh, 2017. What position? Third. Nice, good one. That was good, huh? I think I couldn't guess it, my own. I'm pretty cool, just saying. I rap, I tap, I cap. I would if I could, should, hood. Good, mood, would, ood. Bling, zing, ming, ying. Ding, fling. <laughs> uh. Okay, it's in front of you. Oh, you're playing mind games with me. Barcelona, third place, 2014. Was that right? It's, um, <laughs> it's Budapest, 2015. Uh, uh, third. Third, okay. Yep. I thought I had I, it. I thought, yeah, this one is really difficult. That's why I took it. Nice. I was like, I have to make it a little bit difficult. Um, I'll be rapping, I'll be tapping, I'll be capping. Wood, could, should, mood, good, huh? hard, wood. This is so odd, honestly, yeah. They're like the same in Barcelona and in Budapest. It was the same. Yeah, they're like exactly, you're just unlucky you had the wrong one. All right. You can get a cheeseburger and fries, 4 dollars Oh, hey, I like a tuna here. No one likes a tuna here. Doesn't matter whether you win by an inch or a mile, winning's uh, winning. Rounds closed, pizza boy. Find another way home. <laughs> okay, it's in front of you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it feels pretty straight up and down. It's kind of round. Uh, let me have a think. I it's definitely not square. This might take a while. I'm just going to go through the races. I will get this right. Or no. Um, Oh, um, Hockenheim, 2016, second place. Yeah. Is it? Simply lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. It's coming. Got it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, oh. I, I'm going to try. I don't, uh, I'm going to say Budapest win, 2014. It's 2016, the Belgian Grand Prix second. Yeah? Mm. Oh, cool. I got it, I got it. <laughs> hey All man, right, here's in my face. One, final one, final one. I'm in your face. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Baku. <laughs> I know straight away. <laughs> well done, Baku. You got it. You got it. Well done, Baku. It's quite cozy under there. Did it say something on the blindfold? Daniel, nice. I think it's been, um, it's been emotional over the last few years. And coming to the end of this interview, I have a, I have a little gift for you. Is it like a jack in the box? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
No way. It smells like fuel. That is a go-kart track. <laughs> yeah. That is a go-kart track. It's great, right? Wow. Good smell, that. <laughs> oh. We should have done this before the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Wow. What can I say? Um, it's been, it's been a ride. It's been a hell of a ride. Um, we should probably finish it in style, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my! Screw. <laughs> square, screw. Square. 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 <laughs> screw. You screw. want? You want some? Yeah. Screw. You want some more? Ha! Hello. Kiki, kiki,